three, two, two engine one, sequence start. Zero. One, zero, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, roger, power clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust on all engines. You're right on the money. 30 seconds, we're on the way. Stand by for mode one, Bravo. Mark, one Bravo. One Bravo, two Gs. Roger. And the pressure's coming down. Roger. Hello, Houston, you're go for station. Oh, Roger, go for station. Both control centers, Moscow and Houston, have given a go for docking. Yeah. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty, sounds good. Apollo Vino, Mila, Alexei. Soyuz docking system is ready. Good job. Let's say that. I am approaching Soyuz. Tom, please don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three meters. Three meters. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. Capture. Tell Professor Bushuyev it was a soft docking. Well done, Tom. It was a good show. They are looking forward now to shaking hands with you on, in both of you. All right. On a show. Hawk provide you look free. Okay, the camera. Ha-ha! Ah, just a chance. Got it? Okay, it'll, there. it'll stay open. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Lexi. Just a moment. Uh, if you turn on the camera, hit the remote. Okay. Here. Uh, glad to see you. Here. Pass it to Lexi. Ocean Rod, it's us. Ocean Rod, it's a Russian den. Soviet Soyuz, Sidionic Stata. New possibilities are opening up for fruitful development of scientific cooperation between countries and the peoples in the interests of, of peace and progress of all humanity. I wish you successful completion of the planned program and a safe return to Earth. Leonid Brezhnev. Yeah, astronauts are on the line, sir. Gentlemen, let me call to express my very great admiration for your hard work, your total dedication in preparing for this first joint flight. It's taken us many years to open this door to useful cooperation in space between our two countries. And I'm confident that the day is not far off when space missions made possible by this first joint effort will be more or less commonplace. And may I say, in signing off, here's to a soft landing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. The total uh, system we have demonstrated here, the new docking device, the rendezvous system using techniques in both countries, the communications and procedures and techniques could be available in the future if required not on an instance notice, but it could be available. So I think we have taken a great step that indeed we have opened a new era in the history of man on this, and it will be beneficial.
Final. Go. Gato. Go. Retro. Go fly. GNC. Go fly. Apollo Pico. Control, 99 Go. hours, 29 minutes, Go. phase elapsed time. Go. Flight Director Go. Frank Go. Littleton. Go. Pulsing his flight Go. controllers. Ecom reports everything looks fine. Go for the burn. Okay, Crip, everything's up. Great ship up here. The only thing we're concerned about is that you've got all your splashdown parties coordinated over. Well, I've uh, been working on that. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Ewan Valery Kubasov was selected for a project that many would say was as significant as perhaps landing on the moon, that to link up your Soyuz vehicle with the American Apollo spacecraft in this technical concept and a, born out of a, a political gesture and a technical demonstration. What did you think of this project, what its goals were and what you thought uh, the accomplishments would be when you and uh, Valery were selected uh, to represent uh, Russia? I can only say that I'm very glad that the uh, uh, government, uh, while addressing uh, different countries, our government said that the crew performed flawless. Flawless. That's the actual word they used. And uh, we uh, should not forget about the specifics of that particular time. Cold War. The humankind was at the precipice, literally. But uh, we were lucky to have had very smart people. Kissinger, Kosygin. Fletcher, who understood the situation that was going on on the ground, and they managed to make certain steps to have fixed this situation, to grow some seed of trust that people managed to uh, uh, treat each other differently. I think this program turned out to be a lot of, uh, more important for our countries, and particularly the political aspects, because six billion people were watching us, and they could realize that there is a way to live differently. There is a way to deal with each other in a different manner. Alexei, you and your crewmates um, felt at the time that you were about to do something very significant, I think, that would change U.S.-Russian relations, didn't you? That's exactly what it was. I strongly felt that I received a task which was a really a, a task with huge magnitude. We were supposed to show the entire world that we are human beings that we work together in the most sophisticated area of human activities. It was a very important task. And the rest of the people involved in the preparations for this flight, they were thinking exactly along the same lines. And there were thousands, literally thousands of people in both countries who were involved. And they made everything they could and made it really conducive for us to succeed. And prior to the launch and during the la during the docking and everything was designed in, on the ground uh, between our countries and our respective uh, experts from both countries which let us actually succeed alexei many many people say that the close personal bond that you forged with tom stafford uh, was the key to the success of apollo soyuz uh, you call each other brothers to this day. You correspond with one another frequently. You talk to one another frequently. What was the most important factor that emerged from your personality 
Tom Stafford's personality that uh, created a friendship and a bond that made this mission successful and made you lifelong brothers. Way prior to Soyuz Apollo, just pretty much like media always do, uh, they uh, select the uh, best players during the hockey tournament or the best crew members that uh, deserve flying. And when we have started doing this similar effort, media folks ended up assigning Stafford and myself as a best crew. And I met him for the first time in 1970. He came to Russia to uh, uh, be in Moscow during the funeral of my backup crew, Dobrovolsky, Volkov, and Patsayev. He, he decided to come to Moscow by himself, although the State Department uh, did not allow him to do so. And those kinds of things used to be frowned upon back then. But he came to Moscow anyway. And uh, I was uh, asked to join him and to spend more time with him while in Moscow. And I started taking care of him. He's been calling me a brother for a long, long time. And I don't have any close relatives, no, no parents. They all are gone. And when you have all of a sudden a brother, it's, uh, it just makes the world uh, for me. And we have common children. I helped Tom adopt two sons from Russia, and now they are grown-up guys, they are students. Their surname is Stafford. My granddaughter's name is Karina, just uh, the same way as uh, Thomas's uh, granddaughter. And uh, we have a lot in common. We meet uh, two, three times a year. Alexei, when you look back at uh, Apollo Soyuz four decades ago, you look today at the International Space Station, which many people believe would not have been possible without Apollo Soyuz. What do you see as the legacy of your career, that particular flight, and where are we going from here in the future? After our flight, uh, there was another program, joint program, Shuttle Mir program. Uh, they have done everything very accurately, and which was basically the continuation of what we have started. And it was a part of a cooperation between USA uh, and Russia. And then we logically arrived at the idea of putting together an international spa space station. 400 tons of weight, one and a half hectare of solar arrays, a thousand cubic meters of habitable space, Russian segment, US segment, European segment altogether seven modules, Russian segment five modules, and this is the area where we have permanent presence of three to six crew members at all times. And we used to have as many as nine crew members at some point. And this is continuation of what we have been doing all our lives. And I was actively working in the area of training of those crew members eventually getting to the International Space Station. We're honored today to be joined by General Tom Stafford, a legendary figure in human spaceflight history, commander of Apollo Soyuz, whose 40th anniversary is coming up here very shortly. What did you think about Apollo Soyuz when it was first proposed, and what did you, what did you think the ultimate objective would be? I wasn't thinking so much where, how far way down the road it would lead as I was, well, we can demonstrate to the world <clears throat> that two countries with different languages different units of measurements and certainly vastly different political systems could work together for a common goal. But this would be a good thing it could demonstrate and, and help a, <clears throat> a lot of understanding in the world 
on what we're doing. Because of the close personal bond that you and Alexei Leonov forged, uh, many say that that was the ultimate success to Apollo Soyuz. What was the most impa important factor between the two of you uh, that emerged uh, that bonded a friendship like no other we've ever seen in human spaceflight history? Knowing that the, this mission had to be a success and all that, and just our personalities, it worked out great. And today I consider Alexei like a brother to me. I was an only child, and so I call him the way brought. And I'll tell you how close the friendship has gotten. His granddaughter was named Kareem, and that's named after my daughter. And when my oldest daughter had her last boy, her last son, she named him Alexei. You were the master of rendezvous. You had pulled off a number of rendezvous during Gemini and Apollo, of course. So from that aspect, I don't think you believed that that was going to be a big issue. What did you think was going to be the most intricate part of this mission from a technical standpoint? Well, from a technical standpoint, uh, two things. One, they flew at an atmosphere of sea level pressure, you know, 21% oxygen, 79% uh, nitrogen, where we flew with five pounds per square inch total of pure oxygen. And then how we had to work this together and so that's where the docking module came in good. We also used it as an airlock to go up and down. And we got them to lower their pressure down to, you know, over a period of two days to 10, to lower 10 pounds. And this is, doesn't hurt you, just regular atmospheric mixture. So that, would, that was uh, one thing. The other one was on the docking mechanism. And the, the main thing was uh, not the engage part, but the latching and hold part but it worked out beautiful. And of course, on the other side of the coin, never far uh, away was the whole importance of the political aspect of this. And I just can't even imagine how you and your crewmates dealt with the political pressure of making this a success. Well, what well, we said, uh, we, we taught, thought that this would be, you know, just like a standard mission. And you think just like a test pilot. And uh, so <clears throat> we made it a point, and so did the Soviet side. We kept politics completely out of it. We never discussed politics. It was just the mission. And we were going to make it a success. And then there's a moment of history, docking. So the two vehicles dock. You're joined together, first time in history. Did you feel at that point a sense of history at all? No. Main thing was to be sure we we'd dock. We got soft docked, and I, I greased it in just right on. So there, and then we had to have the hard dock with the other the light, to retract, and those latches pull in and snap. And we got to make sure everything was solid. And so the hatch is open. There's Alexi, and you both seem to be a bit reluctant to move toward one another until you all coaxed each other to shake hands. What a moment. Was that one of the, the greatest moments of your spaceflight career at that point? I think so. I, I think so. I, I've had several great moments, you know, during the first rendezvous in space, and first um, ro flying the lunar module, the first rendezvous around the moon, uh, Gene Cernan's first spacewalk, getting him back in was a great moment, I'll tell you. And, uh, so there, there's a few ones, and definitely, you, you're right. That, that was a really one of the great moments. But again, no thought of politics at that point. Here, here an American and a Soviet, former adversaries, are shaking hands in space together. Did you not feel some political accomplishment as well as just the technical, amazing aspect of uh, reaching this good friend and brother of yours? Uh, now, for some reason, politics... Uh, because uh, to me, here, here was a kind of a fellow crewman and also his other person, Valeri, who had worked hard with us for two years and we'd accomplished it, we'd done it. We, we'd worked out the teamwork together. You know, this mission on Apollo-Soyuz 40 years ago is still considered by many 
uh, almost universally as uh, the key, the birthplace, if you will, to the development and construction of the International Space Station. Uh, did you ever believe that a laboratory of that magnitude and capability, a city in the sky, if you will, uh, could be built and operated on a permanently occupied basis? No, I knew we'd do things in the future. I was very optimistic we'd go on and do some more things like the shuttle was planned and, and we'd have maybe a shuttle to a Soyuz or maybe a new spacecraft would do something like that. But to the magnitude that the space station is today near a, a million pounds and fi 15 countries working together, no, I didn't uh, think that. I, I, because, you know, just the United States and the Russians, you know, was, pardon me, the Soviet Union was the only one that had the capability. So, uh, but uh, I think it's wonderful, and I'm very glad, honored. I'm still involved with uh, uh, the, the program, and I chair the advisory committee for the uh, International Space Station. That's for safety and operational readiness. And it's really started out with Shuttle Mirror, which is a natural extension, and then from Shuttle Mirror to the International Space Station. This fall uh, will mark the 15th anniversary of a permanent human occupancy on the space station, which is remarkable in its own right. As you look back uh, uh, in, in the home stretch of the first two decades of the space station, what do you think is the most important accomplishment of this complex, this, this global project? Well, to me the most important part is bringing these 15 countries together and having been able to agree to work on things and see how, in a way, how flawlessly it's gone. I, I look back now in, in a perspective back, say, over my shoulder in history. So I think it's, it was really wonderful. I had the opportunity to work with Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov, the other Soviet peoples now Russian, and, group, and, and bring this together. 